Hi, it's Alex from Inside Gadgets, and today we're going to be looking at using the ADC on an AT Tiny 85 in differential mode. Um, I'm assuming that you've used the ADC before, and as have I, you've probably just used it in single ended mode. Um, so, what single ended mode means is that you have an input voltage coming into the MCU. Um, you've got a reference, we'll just say 5 volts in our example, and this input voltage is always referenced to ground. Um, what the differential mode provides is that you could have a voltage, say 2.5 volts, and then you could have another voltage. Instead of ground, you'd have 1.5 volts, and so the ADC would measure the difference between those two. Let's have a quick look at the block schematic. Um, we've got the ADC inputs over here, we've got the negative input over here. Um, with differential mode you have a positive input and a negative input, um, and those both go into the gain amplifier which can be 1x or 20x, and then that all filters through to the other circuitry. Let's take a look between the single-ended and differential mode. So in single-ended mode we've got the formula here for our ADC result, so going off our uh, example here, we've got a 2.5 volts uh, voltage in uh, times by 102.4, uh, that's for 10 bits, and we divide that by a voltage was, which was 5 volts, we get a result of 512. For the differential mode, we've got the voltage positive and voltage negative times by 102.4 again, and the voltage reference and we've got the gain either 1 or 20x. Um, so if we go back to our example, we've got 2.5 volts as the positive and 1.5 volts as the negative. So we'll put that into our calculation. So 2.5 minus 1.5. So we get 1 times 102.4 divide reference. So our output result would be 204 um, as the ADC result. So what would you use differential mode for? Uh, for me, my example is that I want to measure the current going across a resistor. So I've got my load over here, and we've got, say, 5 volts coming in here. And let's say that, uh, so we've got a 1 ohm resistor here. We'll say our device draws 10 milliamps. Um, and this is where the ADC would lie. So we've got our positive voltage is 5 volts. This voltage here would be 4.99, so our negative voltage will be 4.99 volts, and this means that this 1 ohm resistor at with this load drawing 10 milliamps would give us a result, uh, a voltage drop of 10 millivolts, and so what that means is now that we've got fully differential mode, we can measure that. So in this example, let's say our reference voltage was 5 volts. Um, so we can plug that into the equation here, so the positive is uh, 5 volts, negative is 4.99 times 102.4 divide 5, so we'll only be seeing 2 millivolts. Um, so for in that case you wouldn't want to use a reference voltage of 5 volts. So let's say we used the uh, internal reference of 1.1 volts. Let's see what we would get from that one. So 4.9 divide that. 102.4 divide 1.1, so we'd see 9 millivolts. So that's almost about a 1 millivolt increase per 1 milliamp. So if you want a better resolution than 1 millivolt per 1 milliamp, you could use the 20x gain amplifier. So if we rerun our equation here and use the gain amplifier, so it would be 5 minus 4.99 divide 1.1 times whoops 4 minus 4.99 uh, 5 minus 4.99 times 1024 divide divide 1.1 times 20 so it would be seeing 186 uh, millivolts so if you had 9 uh, if you had 9 milliamps we'll go 4.91 1.1 times 20, so you would see 167, so that gives us, um, it would be 18 millivolts per milliamp. So let's say you didn't know which one 
of these was positive and which one of these was negative. Um, one way you can solve this is by using the bipolar differential mode and that reduces the ADC to 9 bits but it has um, the 10th bit as the um, sign bit so you would get a result as f from negative 512 to positive 511 and that way you could tell which one of these was really positive and which one was negative and once you found out, um, say that you found out the voltage positive pin was actually negative and this negative was actually positive, you can, it says here that you can use the input polarity, polarity reversal mode um, to switch those around. So once you found out which one was which, you could switch it around in the ADC and then you could go back up here and, and um, use the unipolar mode to get the full resolution of 10 bits since now you know which one's positive and which one's negative. So an example of when you would use the bipolar differential mode, that could be when you have, um, say, a charger here, and that's charging your circuit. Um, and you've got a resistor over here. This would be the positive, this would be the negative, so the current will be flowing this way. Um, and let's just say that this is plugged into the wall and this doesn't have any any uh, diodes so that the current always flows this way. So when you would unplug it from the wall, let's just say that the load will start powering the charger again. So it might just be like a couple of milliamps or something like that. Um, you'd get a positive over here and a negative over here. And so then you would use the bipolar mode to find out which, which way the current is flowing. And say you had a MOSFET in here or in here, then you could just um, terminate that charge. So we'll briefly have a look at the ADC registers here. So we've got the voltage reference that I've uh, referenced before. Um, we've got the input channel selection. So before you might have been using single-ended mode um, and now we can use the differential mode. So say you've got um, positive is PB4, negative is PB3 and then you've got your gain amplification, so 1x or 20x. Um, and they do have an offset calibration mode. So if you've got it would be PB4 to PB4, and the gain of this would be 20. So what you can do, if, if you know um, about op amps, you know that both the inputs aren't perfect, they're not going to be exactly the same. So by calculating the offset, um, you would get your result, you would minus it by the offset, and then you would have a better uh, result to, in taking account the offset. There's one last thing I should mention about the bipolar differential mode which is that your voltage reference should be half of your supply voltage of the microcontroller. So if you if you were using 5 volts, you should be halving that and using 2.5 volts as the voltage reference. This allows the uh, ADC to have either 2.5 volts positive to zero and then to negative 2.5 volts. If you use the voltage reference as 5 volts, then you'll, like I've experienced, you're going to get some uh, weird results happening. We've got a demo circuit here with the ATtiny85. It's running VUSB, so we can uh, print the results on our computer easily. Uh, we've got two 10K resistors here being powered by 5 volts. The white wire is the positive of the ADC, and the orange wire is the negative. And right now, this is just going to be a test for the unipolar mode. So if we plug it into our computer, um, since it's just a 10K divider by 10K, we should get a result, it will be 2.5 volts drop on this uh, resistor. So our result should be 512, around 512. So let's go ahead and check the computer. And you can see the first result is 595. We can just ignore that one. But other than that, we're getting a result of 512 and 515. So that's uh, pretty accurate. Now what we'll do is we'll switch the negative with the positive. So now we should see a result of zero because we don't have bipolar mode enabled. So let's go ahead and plug that in and see what result we get. And you can see our result is zero. So I've reprogrammed the ATtiny85 to run on bipolar mode now. I've put the voltage reference to 2.5 volts. So depending, I'm not too sure how accurate the voltage reference is, but um, since this is a 2.5 volts drop as well, we should see it um, clip um, to the maximum size. So we'll probably see the result of 511 and that will be the maximum it will go. So we'll plug that in and we'll take a look. 
So I've unplugged that. Um, we've got the result here and I've made it easier so we can see the high bytes. So if it's a one, um, it's just a positive result. If it's a two, it's a negative result. So what we've got here is the highest possible positive results. Um, so let's go ahead and delete all of that and we'll now go back over here and swap these uh, positive and negative around. So now we should get the maximum negative result. So we'll see a two and we'll see 512. So let's plug that in. And we see two, 515. We can pretty much ignore the first result. But we do have 2 and 512 and 512. So now we now by using the bipolar mode, we've figured out um, which one's positive, which one's negative. And now we could go back and uh, use the unipolar mode to um, do the full resolution of uh, 10 bits. So hopefully you've learned how we can use the unipolar and bipolar differential modes on the ATtiny85. Thanks for watching.